Pymander Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Today we're going to be playing with this which is a GQ Geiger counter. Giga counter, Geiger counter? Answers down below. It comes in a nice little box and in the box you get a nice little pamphlet to tell you how to use it. They are really easy to use. Now the cool thing about this particular unit is it's relatively cheap. I think it was under it's like £80 or thereabouts. It's not like free, but it's it's pretty cheap. Comes with a lanyard. Comes with a little safety card telling you all the uh, things to worry about. How many counts per minute. And if you're over 2,000, ooh, 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 get out of there. Um, basically, it runs on a couple of batteries. Well, in fact, i tell you what. It doesn't run on a couple of batteries. It has a rechargeable cell. Um... And that conveniently charges up via USB right there. I believe that's a kind of headphone type socket too. That's an external headphone socket to hear the clicks elsewhere. So let's zoom into it. It does have really quite nice logging software. If you go onto the manufacturer's website, there's even a simulator for this. So while you're waiting for this to arrive, you can actually play with it in Windows because you can actually run it. Uh, a quick press will just show you the battery level. A longer press and hold will boot the unit up. That's pretty much all you need to know, most part. Um, if you hit this leftmost button, it goes through the different uh, options for displays. So you have this large font display, which we've got. You've got, ooh, let's see how do you do this, text mode. And then you've got also a graphic mode. I'm doing this wrong. There you go, graphics mode. And then the up, down in all the each modes then just controls the various um, options for each of those particular display modes. So, for example, in graphics mode, you can choose the zooms and bar charts. In text mode, you can choose, you can see there, the dates changing and the time and those things. But I like to have it generally on the large font mode. So if you let it sit there for a while, it'll settle down. And in this part of the country where I am, it'll normally settle to about 16, somewhere between 16 and 18 counts per minute. Interestingly enough, it will show you it has this card that comes with it, which shows uh, if you go to this website, GMC map, you can actually see all the radiation all over the world because the desktop software which logs, which is again really good. This thing's logging by the way all the time. So take it on an aeroplane and then on off the aeroplane, download it via USB and see what you've done. But the, there's an option in the desktop software. You can click and it'll upload the logs and you can just say where you were and it'll update this map, which could be nice for people if you want to go visit Chernobyl or something. So you can see the radiation is growing. Now I do have a, uh, I guess, an ionizing radiation source, this thing, which is busted out of a smoke detector. So don't do this at home. It's not particularly dangerous, but it's not particularly safe. And that there, that little pellet in there is your radiation source of, um, I think, how would you pronounce it? It's Ameri Americium, Americium, American 241. Um, I believe it is an alpha radiation. It shouldn't go through your skin, yeah? But on the same time, if you ingest it or something, it's gonna be bad news. So you can see already this is actually going up. Now, the, they say these meters aren't supposed to be able to pick these up, but I, th I think it probably does decay more than just the standard um, alpha particles. I think every now and then it might give off a more energetic particle. So I'll just leave it right there. So it's literally, literally like pointing at there, that's how I kind of want it. It's literally pointing at the machine. And what you'll notice happen, you can hear those clicks. I'll be quiet for a moment. You can hear the clicks and see the pulses there as the machine is detecting that. So it is genuinely detecting the radiation. And while that's going up, we'll have a look at the little card that comes with it. So there's the little card. And it tells you 5 to 50 counts per minute is normal background radiation. 51 to 99 is a medium level. So it says check the reading regularly because something's up. Over 100, that's high. There's a problem here. Over 1,000, it's like leave the area. Something's going down, some nuclear meltdown. Then over 2,000, frankly, it's already bad news by then. It already is bad news. You can do all sorts of things. If you bring this on a, a, a trip with you, you could try running it through the x-ray machine at the airport. That'll give you something. And then in the air, you'll detect a certain amount of uh, cosmic rays hitting you. Effectively, these are all cosmic rays, this background radiation. 
um, you see like that. I mean, a lot of it's from the earth. Bananas, granite, all sorts of things like that. So you can see at the moment now it's really getting a little bit uh, toasty in there. So we're actually getting up to the point where it's saying, um, check there, <laughs> it's almost at the high level now, which is 100. So let's say, don't eat. Don't eat that. And I'm going to take this away, put it back in its little protective cage. I did mislay this in the office at one point, and uh, that was pretty tricky trying to find it, I can tell you. Little, a little lump of uh, plastic somewhere among the, uh, the back office. So you can see what will happen now. That will sort of settle it, settle down and start to go back down again as that energy dissipates in the tube. But I'm going to show you how this, this works, at least as far as my understanding of how it works. So feel free to correct me. And we'll put this little box, shall we? That will do all right for now. So I don't, it's quite a nice finish. I don't want to scratch it. I've, I've even left the protective sheath on. So you can see, by the way, it is going back down again. It's calming down, taking it down to Chinatown. Turn that off, power off. Right. So we've already seen, actually, we don't need to go into the back door because the battery isn't a, uh, a standard one. I don't know why I thought it was a standard one. It's weird, isn't it? And it does have these quite nice screw holes here, don't they? So you could mount this on a wall somewhere if you want constant uh, monitoring. But it is fun. I tell you what, it is really fun. Hook it up to your PC or just have it running and you get used to those clicks. You get used to the frequency of the clicks. Then every now and then you'll hear the clicks go up something chronic, like a zzz, you know. You'll be like, what was that? What was that? And that was literally, you know, maybe a, a solar flare or something just blasting its way through your through your skin, effectively, through your whole being. So, look at this. It's a nice bit of kit. Now, I'm not going to lift the PCB out because there's nothing really to see. It's just the screen and the membrane uh, click keys. I think all the gubbins you need to know are on this side, the interesting stuff. So, we've got our rechargeable cell right there. You've got an STC microcontroller controlling everything. There's your little clicky clicker. There's the headphone socket, the USB. So that's all good under the hood. And here is your tube. So that's an evacuated uh, vacuum tube, which is effectively your detector. And if you see in there, there is a bar in there. And I don't know what the bar's made of. It could be maybe tungsten or something like that. And my best guess is, as ionizing radiation hits this, bang, it affects the conductivity. And I'm looking through. Yeah, so it looks to me like this bar here is connected to this end of the tube. And this end, it's not actually connected. So I'm guessing as radiation hits that, it... it ionizes on that bar and, and actually changes the conductivity within that envelope and then what you're detecting is probably the conductivity across there. Um, I'm not sure if there's any... Let's just check. Hopefully we won't break this. See there's no con continuity in there at all. So it's almost like an antenna. If you think about it, it's almost like a radio uh, receiver. And that's, that's pretty much all it is. I mean there's not much to see. But you can hear from it working, it does work. And what's interesting about it, there is calibration profiles for it. So it does come with a default calibration. But if you do have a known radiation source, you could leave it in its presence and then adjust the uh, calibration factor. But you know, it depends what you're looking for. I mean, realistically, it's probably accurate enough if you wanna know whether or not you're gonna, if you need to leave the area, put it that way. Um, whether or not you can measure, you know, walnuts or is it walnuts or Brazil nuts? One of those sorts of nuts, some sort of nuts are, are slightly radioactive. Whether or not it's sensitive to, to get those, I don't know um, without sort of further calibration. But it's all done by software. The calibration profile actually also uh, can be operated from the uh, connection here. And what's really interesting, the connection allows full access to all the functions on this thing. I think you can even upload and download new firmware. So it's really customizable. So if you're very uh, interested in nuclear stuff like nuclear radiation or your environment around you, I'd say have a fun with this. If you live in certain parts of the country, 
um, like I think parts of Wales or parts of the Midlands, things like that, or you know up north, you actually have um, radon gas in those places. I mean, you will have a potentially uh, something radioactive that you could measure in your local environment. If you're near a quarry, something like that, again, bring one down, see if you have a noticeable thing in the quarry. If you're into light aircraft or you fly light aircraft or even, to be honest, um, large commercial uh, jets, I don't think the aluminium skin on those things actually protects you one jot from these things. These things have flown like, you know, millions and millions of miles through space, are highly energetic particles, and they just blitz through you like nobody's business. And remember, every time they, these things go through you, they're potentially damaging your uh, DNA, and it's happening all of the time. It's just amazing that we uh, we obviously designed to survive this sort of constant onslaught. Um, there is another experiment you, you can look on YouTube for. I think it's called a cloud chamber, and it's amazing where you can actually have a vapor. You set up a vapor within a uh, like an aquarium, basically something like that, and you can actually see the. They look like little rockets, you know, like fireworks coming through the air as they interact with that vapor, and then just you see the contrail like a little like that going along. It's fan. It's actually fascinating. It really is. I'll tell you what, there you could. There's there's definitely worse subjects to learn about. Go learn about ionizing radiation. It is so interesting. Um, and also, here's another thing for about nuclear radiation. It's always about like you know they talk about things with a um, really long half life, but in, in a way, those things with a long half life are actually kind of safer in in uh, some respects because something with a short half life is giving away more energy in a shorter space of time. So there's all sorts of fascinating things. It's worth knowing because when you read something in the papers about like Fukushima or something like that, it gives you a better context to understand. Uh, a lot of the time, I feel either the journalists don't understand or they are um, misrepresenting the situation. Let's put it that way. Anyway, that's enough ranting for me. I'm going to go and carry this around with me and see if I can find anything radioactive in the house. And I'll speak to you soon. All the best. Bye-bye.